Welcome, fine folks, to the Common Briefing Program. We are a part of the Common Geeking Program. This is a podcast, uh, typically a book club for geek culture, but here we are ready to brief you on the news, bringing you the hottest headlines from geek news for July of 2019. My name is Colin Ketchin. I am your host, and this month I am joined by returning correspondent. It's me, Austin Levers, your returning correspondent. I've got a juicy one for you guys, but we'll get to that later. Now, we are currently lacking our other frequent correspondent and joined by guest anchor. I was I was on a few in a row the one time. Yeah, I've been on but... a few. My name is Jeff. I know. I, I listened to the last one. I heard the I heard the, the talk of you you having the same cast. Oh, three good. Times. People in the podcast listen to the podcast. This is reassuring. It's, it's the wow. first one I've listened to in a while. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm honored. Thank and uh, I can't promise that I'm that I'm bringing anything particularly exciting to most people, but it's pretty exciting to me. So that's what matters. This is all about getting that geek perspective, Jeff. So we are <laughs> about to. Uh, we have one hour to summarize the news. It's probably going to be less than an hour for two reasons. One, I had a very long weekend and I'm very sleepy. Two, I just had an allergy attack start about two minutes ago. That's so great. my brain is going in a few different directions and eight kinds of fluid are falling out of my face. Uh, I will do my best to edit those glops out of the episode for our dear listeners. And Jeff is oh going to put them all right back in. <laughs> so, uh, well, I may, uh, honestly, though, That's I've had a me. very, out of a, face. I, I've had a great weekend. And though I am tired, I am excited to chat about the news with the two of you. Because oh, was your birthday. Boy, it, it, yes, it was my birthday this weekend. I saw you did a high ropes course. Yeah, I, I, I was not, I was without the internet yesterday, so I completely forgot to wish you happy birthday slash steal it from you <laughs> and add it to my birthday supply making me older and keeping you all the same age do you have so, the machine from the princess bride where they just crank the lever up and it just like <laughs> adds years to your life i don't feel comfortable disclosing that information because a time. lot of under 18 That's year olds would really enjoy that for access to specific websites so clearly <laughs> i'm in a strange headspace uh but how are the how are the two of you doing after this weekend Oh, I'm uh, doing okay. I've been dealing with a lot of moving into new apartment type stuff. Oh, and, why is that? Because you know, wow. I've moved into a new apartment. Oh, wow. Okay, that's kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> As one might surmise. <laughs> <laughs> How did you how did you know? <laughs> Austin, do you have anything to say or will you let the news speak for you? Uh, I don't know. Um I I just I drove 4 hours and tomorrow I'm going to drive more hours and we're going to see how that goes. But You just started writing a song right there. That was, <laughs> was catchy. <laughs> Because I just I, drove you, four four. Nope. No, I, I think this, that's the sort of one you gotta put a like a twang on it and make it into like that pop country thing. I just drove. <laughs> yeah, four. yeah. You take your horse. Wait, we're gonna do you it. take your horse down the old town road for four hours? Oh God, no! I'm not. I can't. I can't do that. You said pop country. That's the poppiest country there is. A true crossover where like it's entirely one country? genre but uses words from the other genre, and that's the crossover. But I thought no, it was more um, of a crossover the... with rap with than with pop. Isn't it like with a rapper? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but you could, I mean. I mean, it's pop because it's yeah. popular, I guess. And pop it's... is just a terrible music category, that's all. Yeah, yeah it doesn't yes. really <laughs> make any, it's the only, it's one of the few musical categories not defined at all by the contents of the music. Yeah. I mean, so. it, I feel like it's got a, like, you, you know what, I'm going to just cut that short because I've got more important things I'd like to talk about than the distinction you know between what? I pop think... music and other kinds of music. I think that we all do, so I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. Hello, I am Colin Ketchin. I have a few minutes to tell you what I think are the most important, impactful stories in geek culture for July of 2019. Now, Let's do it. I was really planning to have this month's episode be an episode where I'm talking about, you know, more interesting, you know, more high concept things. Because in July, because uh -huh. in June we had E3, and it was all like, it's the glitzy stuff, you know? It's them sexy games. It's them pretty polygons mm -hmm. and everything. Like, you're expecting that out of Look June and July. Look at all the new characters for Super Smash Brothers. Exactly. And I thought and a that, lot of numbers. And I thought that this month <laughs> would be the month where I can relax. And then for the first time that I can recall, the biggest news 
out of San Diego Comic-Con, arguably, was Star Trek. And I can't fucking believe it. Uh, So (laughs) I'm going to start with this because... No, please. Star Trek news. First things first. Star Trek Picard got a trailer. The ship isn't called the Picard. The person is. It's, it's Picard. He's back. And we knew he was coming back, but this show is about Captain Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. Wait, he, wait a hold it fucking se- Are all the other Star Trek shows named after the ship? Uh, after Next Generation, you have Deep Space Nine. That's the name of the station. Huh. Voyager is Voyager. Okay. Enterprise that, is the NX-01 Enterprise. And Discovery is about the USS Discovery. Huh. And there is no ship called the Starship Picard yet. Yeah, so. but there's also no ship called Next Generation, so I feel like that's kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but know they've what? Established I, a pattern. Now. They, they, yeah. <laughs> they, they did after next but generation. The callback is, but the callback of Picard is going back to pre-pattern, which is why I think it's okay. Yes. Oh, yes. But um, so. I my jaw dropped a few times because it, the the trailer was a healthy mix of fan service and new content, where it's drawing on the J.J. Abrams movies, it's drawing on Star Trek Nemesis, it's drawing on a lot of different points in the canon. Uh, we have now, recurring is characters. Nemesis a ship. Nemesis is a movie. The movies are not named after the ships. Otherwise, okay. if you had a ship okay. called the Voyage Home, that would really limit your <laughs> navigational <laughs> options. So, yeah. or Wrath of Khan. Would- would have been really, really oddly coincidental. You need to have a specific temperament or higher. They're like, qualify. what are the odds that Khan is imposing <laughs> wrath upon the Wrath of Khan ship? It's like they watched the episode from the 60s. So, well, so wait, is Picard a show or a movie? It is a television show. It's going to be on oh. CBS All Access. Uh, the okay. first season is going to be 10 episodes. Patrick Stewart returns as Picard, and we he's, it's, he's the only person that's been confirmed. All the other cast members have been like, I have no idea what's going on with it, except except one who's, one who's directing it. And then the trailer came out, and it turns out all the actors are fucking liars because a bunch of them are in it. Because, yes, uh-huh. Data shows up in the trailer, uh, the which... He's an android, so he doesn't age, but the actor is a little older and has gained some weight, so it's a little jarring at first, but as soon as he starts talking, like, it it feels right. Seven of Nine, a character from Star Trek Voyager is joining, which is just a Mm -hmm. delightful... She's the best part of that show, hands down. Um, You've got uh, Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis returning as their characters, and that's all the fan service stuff, but it looks like the plot is going to be something about the desolated Romulan Empire taking over a Borg cube, and there's some crazy conspiracy going on there. Um, my girlfriend and I framed by framed the, it took us 45 minutes, we framed <laughs> by framed the trailer, because she's almost done with Voyager. So um, I've got some theories. Yes, Austin, you look like you have a question. So wait, uh, I know the content of this show is like probably what you're interested in, but did they... I, did all the this so i'm i'm a little bit concerned yes. this is a trend that i think we uh, many of us might have noticed in a lot of the a lot of uh <laughs> entertainment media um but like so everything this, is old stuff no no but the all of the all of the actors lying and saying that they're not part of it did did that like i can't imagine that they all just decided they didn't want to say anything about this was it they likely have an nda did the studio like say hey guys you can't say stuff about your job or oh they absolutely but it's, isn't it's that an NDA. usually just like them saying no comments instead of outwardly lying about things because i well, feel like usually when well i mean jeff I you know. and i have had conversations on the record about your distaste for how avengers infinity war outright lied <laughs> yeah. to us in the trailer so these companies sure. are not above lying to us about things but i think they're harmless but these lies. are people not like people under ndas are different than companies lying about their well own they're media. well they're not saying no comment i recall them tweeting things like i have no idea what's going on with this show and they're like yeah i'm in it which is a lie he, he, he. that's what i'm saying yeah but <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, it's one that i'm okay with it's one that i think goes to the spirit of the nda and surprising sure. people and i was legitimately surprised by the trailer uh, I think the fan service is going to get a lot of people in the door, and I hope it is as good as, like, Discovery has been, because we're also getting, we got teases of more Discovery, more shorts, mm-hmm. um, the animated show Comedy by Mike McMahon, who's a writer on Rick and Morty, he's got a comedy Star Trek animated series coming out, so we got a lot of information on those things, Star Trek is in, like, it's sort of, like, second renaissance, and I'm really enjoying it. Is that, a is that fucking Tarantino Star Trek project still a thing that on the table? Now- now that okay, that's oh, yeah. actually that I wasn't going to talk about it, but yeah, I know some stuff on that because uh, is my iPad upside down? That's why it's not working. So the 
I got I got a new iPad. I'm learning. I don't work at Apple anymore. I forgot how iPads work. Um, Quentin Tarantino. They had to take all of his genius knowledge from him because he knew too much about the company, and now he's on the same level as the rest of us. That's exactly right. It. Don't ask me your questions. So yeah, Quentin it's Tarantino. part of the NDA agreement, except they got to take his memories. Yeah, right. but I still get to lie on Twitter, so that's fun. So <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is not attached to direct a Star Trek movie. He pitched an idea, an idea to J.J., and J.J. was like, ah, oh, fuck yeah let's, that's great and then he's like but if i do it it's gonna have a lot of swears and it's gonna be rated r and jj's like yeah fuck yeah that's great and all the fans are like oh, hold up what and lately now that once upon a time in hollywood has released he is focusing on his next movie he doesn't he he's he's being waffly on whether he's gonna direct it because he said he wanted to do 10 movies but i think he doesn't really want to end on a franchise film which he's never done before but yeah. he really, really likes original Star Trek. So he's basically going to disregard uh, like a lot of the timeline stuff and just make a Star Trek movie. He says the script is there. He huh. wants to work on it. He wants to make it. I'm actually really excited for it. I think that the best Star Trek entries have come from the creators that were not in love with Star Trek like full stop i think it came from the people who saw what was good in it and and appreciated it for that the guy who directed wrath of khan are like what is considered the best of the franchise was does not generally like star trek like he's not really a star trek fan and he made three of the best movies so i would like to see tarantino get his hands on it and if it's bad we got enough of those like i know how to deal with it it's fine <laughs> Taylor william shatner direct a movie who thought that was gonna be a good idea it wasn't <laughs> it really my was cat is scheming hmm? i see him ready your cat is scheming oh I that's ex- that's fucking... actually a new cat i just new got cat. the cat today her name is jayla actually named after She's a scheming. character from star oh trek God. beyond so of course, that's cool. <laughs> All right, so d- enough with Star Trek. There was one thing we've talked a decent amount this past year in this podcast about some issues in in game development culture, specifically uh, around crunch and overwork and pretty bad workplace conditions. Crunch being like, hey, we need to ship a game. So everybody, you're going to work like 100 hours a week under threat of being fired. And uh, rocks... What a good time to remember that you're not unionized, ex- idiots. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude that will get them on board with collective bargaining. So the, uh, like, Epic has had some issues lately uh, because they run Fortnite, and Fortnite puts out content weekly, and they did not expect it to be, the like, the biggest game in the world, and then it was, and it's like, how do you, how do you prepare for Whoops. that? <laughs> Oops, we became the best. And, um, but then you see other studios like, uh, Respawn, who is Apex Legends, also hugely successful, but they are putting out stuff less frequently to fight it. And it's good to see stuff like that. And I have some good news on this front. There is a new sort of like group, like a collaboration between various, uh, studios called Take This. It is a not-for-profit dedicated to addressing mental health problems in the game industry. I am citing Polygon here. They published an article earlier this month. Um, It is a working group made up of five companies, Big Huge Games, Certain Affinity, Wooga, Zenimax, and Bungie. Now, Certain Affinity works on a lot of different things. They're not like a well-known name, but they work on Call of Duty. They work on Halo. they they, They work on a lot of different things. But then you've got Zenimax, Zenimax, like Bethesda, Zen, uh, so Elder Scrolls Fallout, and then you've got Bungie, Destiny, and whatever their next franchise is going to be. So we have, um, we now have a group of very influential companies starting a collective that is going to include companies working together to improve conditions, not for any legal reason, but just for the sake of sort of doing the right thing, which also increases return on investment and employee retention and quality of work. Uh, and I was very, very excited to see this. I bookmarked it as soon as I saw it because I knew I wanted to talk about this. I think that this... Um, this th- it's in response to um a study on mental health in the game industry and it's like it is like it's not just people saying we need to make things better like they have tenets and goals that are specifically based mm-hmm. on data and are citing studies on how uh employees have been negatively affected in the game development industry and i think that it is a fantastic thing to see um it's not much, but like I'm, I don't plan on playing Red Dead Redemption after hearing the stories of what went into making it, and uh, like they already got all the money in the world, so who cares about me? But it's, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, it's like no, I, I like sort my of games. Like when they, uh, when when the news came out that Amazon 
like treats their treated their workers like super bad and then they yeah. someone sent out a poll of like oh does this actually affect whether or not you're going to buy stuff from Amazon and the resound oh and God. like the results were pretty much completely yeah no sorry i like deals yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, honestly and personally i have deleted the Amazon app off of my stuff i'm not going to say like there's no like everything's problematic to some degree in yeah, yeah. In, like in what capitalism that like, Bezos have a finger in anyway so like yeah. Not these buttholes. So I That's good. am, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's like nobody's perfect. Everybody is contributing to some sort of something bad at some place. But it, it, it makes me feel good, one, to know that the people I patronize are working hard on this. And two, uh, that I can feel good about <laughs> about, about buying, to, about okay, buying that, some of these that games. that w- version of the word patronize, I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, okay. <laughs> that kind of patronize. Um, I'm sure I had something else. But the snot has ascended into my brain, and I need to stop talking now. So I'm going to allow one of you two to go next. No, that's cool. I have two things, but since you had one of your things, um, I'm going to do it there i think there's kind of a dovetail going on there uh it's kind of related but just thematically and then i'll get to the juicy bit this isn't the juicy bit although it's juicy in like a more important sense it's not as entertaining (laughs) but um, were you also like kind of skeeved out that he said it's juicy in um in a like like just <laughs> pause and lips. I was just waiting for how it was I didn't juicy. mean to. Okay. Like if it was um, juicy so in the way that Colin is juicy right now, or if it's juicy is in a different kind of juicy. Yes. Yeah, so so the first one that I have right here is that um so uh the YouTube union just merged with the largest independent trade union in the world. Uh so they have a joint venture with them now and they're trying to get uh they have some demands for YouTube now that they're going to be part of this larger, more powerful union. Fuck yeah. Um and they want um more transparency in how videos are flagged by bots and why they're blocked or demonetized or whatever. And that's been that's a lot good. of a uh, problem for like Yes. I don't know everyone. how overblown of a problem <laughs> it's been for like streamers and shit, but like I've seen issues with the flag- Flagging and demonetization. Well, yeah, th- in have a you, lot of ways. Th- th- there have been several like events that the that YouTubers called the adpocalypse. There's been like two yeah. instances where like those things were so opaque that people are like, "I'm losing all my money now." Yeah, and, and it's just how? like, oh, even if know. they can, even if they can get it back, it might have they might have already lost a lot of money in the time it takes them to notice that their videos were flagged or yada yeah. yada, etc. Et yeah, cetera. it's wild. Okay, yeah. I didn't hear about this. So what? No, this was super cool because I follow a bunch bunch of uh leftist people on the internet so i hear about union shit um so then uh so like they, they want this more transparency specifically they want like clear rules and exact reasoning uh put forth by youtube on like the kinds of choices that they make and as part of that they want uh no more like machine responses for people uh, appealing their uh their uh content getting taken down and stuff because there are like some stock responses that youtube just sends out like oh it didn't accord with our guidelines and so we decided and like you know that doesn't help anyone at all if you're not pointing out it's like asking for feedback and someone says good job yeah um and then uh that's to to responses to repeals right not the initial reason that things. exactly yes because like Um, there's so much stuff on youtube like yeah and then they also want a uh the union to have like uh, a voice in a uh, youtube policy so like you know not just the executives and stuff but you know they, they'd be able to help guide some of this intra in in company legislation type shit and then finally um they want uh when there are disputes within youtube they want to have like a, a neutral third party present to help arbitrate those instead of just like you know youtube uh executives and admin just saying oh these people below us you do whatever you want so that's kind of a cool thing that's happening and it's cool that they're emerging with a larger union because like you know workers unite and shit so that was the thing but the juicy entertainment one like that's a super (laughs) cool thing that's going on and it's important for the lives of many people back to the juice but 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 batman versus the ninja turtle has anyone heard about the Crate Depression. That's a C-R-A-T-E depression. No. What is no. that? Okay. Wait. That makes sense. Okay, because you said you said this in the group chat as we were preparing for this, and I'm like, <laughs> what bullshit is Austin on right now? 
Like you're you're pretty good at non sequiturs in our group chats, but I just didn't even think <laughs> no anything is, of it. This is this is it's kind of a big thing, kind of a little thing, mostly just me laughing at other people type of thing. Um, so on, <laughs> so you're gonna be surprised by a number of things that I'm about to say. So on I July already 20th, am. So on July 25th, <laughs> Team Fortress Two got an update at 2 a.m. What? Because apparently they're still updating Team Fortress Two. I haven't played that game in forever, but it's a thing. Um. So the update came with a bug. We're going to get to the bug in a minute. So since neither of you play Team, uh, Team Fortress 2, and I'm assuming that a lot of people who are going to be listening to my fucking mouth right now don't uh, play it either. If you do, I'm sorry that this may have affected your life in some way. It wasn't just positive. Um, I played it on the orange box on Xbox. So, you know, like the least vital version of Team Fortress 2 in history. Yes, but uh, so Team Fortress 2 has like a thriving uh, cosmetics economy. It like started cosmetics economies. Exactly, and so people, um, you know, the, the hats in Team Fortress 2 are this big thing, and a lot of them are extremely rare, and people can pay, you know, people have sunk hundreds, thousands of dollars into this game because there are some items that have only appeared like five times in the history of the game due to the game's RNG. So, you know, like it's this, uh, there's this scarcity that creates this value for people who like the game. The bug, there's a bug that came with the new <laughs> update on... Oh, God. <laughs> Audience, on Austin on has such a big smile right now. It's unbelievable. And it started, so the, the um, these items, the, uh, the sort that have only appeared like five or whatever times in the past, they're called uh, unusuals. And <laughs> that sounds yeah, like kind of an understatement, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, Unusual it's not, sounds it's like you're like third or second from the top of the tier <laughs> of like a mega ultra rare, unachievable, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Team Fortress 2 is it's it's unusual in a couple ways. But um <laughs> the they started getting uh guaranteed drops from crates so like oh, that's everyone, what the bug did yeah like certain sometimes crates would just give you a guarantee oh, did it like, like unusual... totally blow the supply demand by oversaturating the market yeah oh, in, oh within, my within, god so, so, but the thing the, it, it gets so good so like <laughs> three unusuals had been mined by the community within like a couple hours and the oh. dev team didn't like see or get to do anything about the bug you know it was released at 2 a.m nothing happened for 12 hours and it was just chaos oh no <laughs> um, wait the so drop, these like, are things that people previously had spent like a real a lot amount of money on yes like when, and like Jesus. you know it, it, it there's this thriving economy so like people are holding them like you know people are yeah. people are trading them people are paying other people real money to trade them to them what, it's a um, lot what are the items? Um, they're, they're they're hats. hats. Yeah, you sure. Can but put what are the hats on your characters? Do you put hats on? Um, yeah, but I mean specifically the unusuals that you're talking about. Like, what are the? You said there there are like two or um, three of them, right? One was this. One was this. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, I can I can look up the exact things, but I think one was this funky headband. I sorry, no a bandana thing, but the, we can. Uh, uh, if it's gonna take too long, that's okay. But it it, it might take me long. I don't want to watch these videos. Um. Uh. Uh. Please let me view the page. Um. Yeah. I'm not. I. I'm. I don't want to lengthen that's the fine. podcast too much. Yeah, yeah. But you can look it up on your own time. Like it, it's. I'm just the the whole idea of this thing is wild to me. So like for yeah, twelve hours, the, the, like these things, there were certain unusuals that had dropped down, like that people had been holding that were not from the glitch. That people that dropped down to like four dollars in price at one point. Jesus. Out of what? Well, from what? I can't find a lot of good data on this because um the su the TF2 subreddit was locked down <laughs> after yeah <laughs> somebody oh, in the subreddit course. apparently had some money in this strange um but <laughs> yeah so th th this stuff it was it was crazy at this point now um I guess the Valve developers have uh they've frozen um the uh, they've frozen your ability to trade the uh the unusuals generated from this glitch so like you know the ones that were created by uh being uh uh the the what's the, the 
guaranteed drops from these crates oh, okay. can't be traded or turned into other in-game things. It's just like on your, it's locked uh-huh. on your account. You can't. So that's something. So but some people still... just have like a thousand of these or some shit now. Um, not quite that many. Some people might have like a couple. <laughs> Let's not get like... ridiculous, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> but like, but still, um, so so I think that was a hilarious thing to happen because like it's so good. It just makes me think of like. As an investment, Team Fortress 2, like, I have spent money on microtransactions in games before, but not to that extent. Not yeah. enough to make it, like, an investment plan for myself <laughs> to make yeah. money, you It know? makes me wonder what what it's like to play EVE Online. I don't, oh, God. I don't know what you know yeah. about that, but, like, the thousands of dollars people pay to build their start ship, that, that game probably has a more functional economy than some countries, which is just insane. But um, it is it is weird to think that the hats in Team Fortress 2 came close to an economic crisis on the scale of EVE Online. That's just, yeah. fa- that is fantastic <laughs> to me. I'm so happy I know this information. Yeah, but now <laughs> the thing is, crazy. like, so I've, I've read some articles on the matter after, like, after the fact, because it's been a couple days, and, you know, uh, people are writing things about it now. It's apparently, th- there are memes and stuff going on Know Your Meme, and a lot of blogs are saying some shit about why they're angry or what their analysis of the situation is. And so, uh, it seems to be, like, a couple people are concerned that this will, like change the way we view uh, microtransactions in games because tf2 yeah, is so this is yeah. the thing that's gonna do it <laughs> not the pending legislation not ea tanking their major franchises yep. this the great <laughs> yeah, depression suddenly... of 2019 <laughs> yeah I, I actually i read one never uh, forget some hats no, I read an article earlier that was, uh, it's, it's not on my screen anymore, but the, someone was speculating that, like, you know, suddenly because of this, people realize how, like, how, th- how, how little barrier there is between, like, your video game investments and total disaster, and I'm like, okay, um, I feel like the people who will jump ship never really got on that ship, you know, <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. I yeah. think they're making the mistake of believing that like everyone is everyone in an economy is a rational actor and we're just not we're just doing things to have fun and that we like and uh, <laughs> that was a, a silly moment in TF2 history. All right, thank Austin, thank you July. so much. Did you have any <laughs> any other addendums cuz I feel like that was a bit of a fucking like breaking news right there. Oh uh, no, it was that that's it. I think everything is going back to normal, honestly. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness that the that, that Team Fortress 2 is back on its feet. <laughs> Jeff, can you give us something a little more lighthearted? <laughs> something to uh, talk yeah, us down? I think so. <laughs> so I was just about <laughs> to talk a bunch of shit question. about like people spending uh, a lot of money on, on virtual items and video games, but Let's hear what I've got to talk about before I would have said that. <laughs> um, so, uh, for those of you not in the know, I am a collector of Transformers action figures. Um, I do recall. So this will not be an overly huge deal to most of the geek community, but of my of my little niche market, this is like the biggest deal in a while. Um, so uh, recently on July 15th, uh, Hasbro announced that, um, so they're going to be making a new figure of Unicron, Unicron. The, the planet eater from yeah. the 1986 Transformers it's gonna, movie. It's going to be big. But it, big very boy. big, yeah. So this is going Fuck. to be a little bit unprecedented, not just in the fact that this will now be the new record holder of the largest transforming uh, figure that exists officially, um, but it's a little bit unprecedented in terms of uh, Transformers collecting because it's actually being... Uh, crowdfunded as part of huh. like yeah so Hasbro oh. has a division what? called HasLab which um, is basically devoted to like doing like really high end yeah. pieces and so the crowdfunding like let me get into that for a mm. sec because it's not what I would have traditionally thought they thought didn't of make as... enough money off the movies so to, that's like... not it's so the crowdfunding is basically like like I don't I, I'm not like super into like I don't follow a lot of crowdfunding stuff so I don't know if sometimes this is how it works but basically like everyone who is funding it is basically just like placing a pre-order for the price and if they get a certain oh, number so, yeah of so backers, like, a, 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 like okay. a way to sort of gauge interest yeah 
Exactly, right? Like, they got to make sure they have enough people to, to actually buy it before they invest in doing it. Um, Do they, have they done the designs already, or are they... Yeah, I've seen pictures so the, of it. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Okay. It's the designs... Movie. Yeah, the designs are out. Um, yeah, that, that's another thing I was questioning, because, like, it, it seems like they've got it pretty mostly figured out. But it might just be, like, the, you know, the cost of actually, like, producing it a bunch. Most likely, um, yeah. They've got to make the molds and then, you know... Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So molds the... expensive. It is 27 inches tall, and it Same. weighs 19 <laughs> pounds. That's hilarious. Which is... Oh, my God. You know, for <laughs> reference, the, the previous yeah. record holder of the largest Transformer, which is um, the Titans Return Fortress Maximus figure, which is a guy who turns into a big city, uh, is... I believe 24 inches, which does not seem like a huge jump up, but, you know, in, at that scale, it really is. And that only weighs, I believe, about nine pounds. <laughs> so oh. this thing is like Whoa. three inches taller and sturdy. weighs over twice the like this so it's kind of a big deal um they added like yeah. 40 number threes at mcdonald's the number three <laughs> is, the, is it's the quarter pounder so it needs the the crowdfunding thing needs eight thousand backers by the end of august and currently at the time of its record uh, of the time of this recording it is currently at, at 2041 uh backers i'm not one of them uh, yet <laughs> maybe i don't know i don't have that kind of money so yeah uh, i'm just thinking <laughs> how much is it how much is the, the that so yeah there? here it is the pledge the what the figure will cost before tax and shipping a 19 pound thing is 574 dollars and 99 cents that's about there you that's, go. that's about what yeah. i was expecting Which is a lot it's yeah. oh that's yes an and think also it- given that this was announced mid-July and the backing has till the end of August, um, I'm not sure if you place the pre-order that if you have to put that money down now or if you're Are they using Kickstarter just committing. Or- Hmm? It should say on no, the so it's using page though. Yeah, it probably does somewhere, but it, it yeah, says, different services do it differently. That's that's well, it's not you. So it yeah. it's this is Haslab, which is Hasbro's own crowdfunding. Oh, oh source. okay, I didn't realize yeah. that they crowdfunded all their stuff. They don't. Th- so for only like really high end things, and I'm not. I think Haslab is pretty new. I'm not sure that other things have been used with this yet. The only two things that are listed on here right now are this. And a, like, I think what's a one-to-one scale, like, replica of Cookie Monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's only, like, $300 if, if you're interested in that. But um, I just those, like are the, the idea those are the only them, two things listed on there right now. I but. like the idea of them crowdfunding the next Transformers movie, and then John Cena is just, like, trying to raise <laughs> money for, for all their film endeavors. Um, so this is, like, yeah, it's crazy. It was, like, it, the reason it's, like, they're doing the crowdfunding is, like, this is not really something that they could release retail because like it's it's really like a high-end collector's item as opposed to like even the other yeah. previous biggest things are They're definitely like toys into that, into that like lego star wars market there the mm. yeah you can get, I, I i think the most expensive one they have is the lego millennium falcon i i mm-hmm. think that's it because that's eight hundred dollars um and actually i have a friend who got it and it's yeah fucking magnificent that thing but um no yeah this is it's that kind of market where, like, I'm kind of surprised they're crowdfunding it a little bit just because Hasbro has, like, the weight to throw around to just put something like this out and leave yeah. it there. Because nobody else is going to mm-hmm. try to outdo this for a really long time. Like, they could just let no. it, let them sit there for yeah. a while. I don't know. I'm yeah, pretty so ignorant that's, of this. That's the other part of the news of it is so that, that like, traditionally when making Transformers, there's two companies that do it. It's uh, Hasbro on the, you know, United States side mm-hmm. and then Takara Tomy on the Japanese side. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so... I learned that from this podcast. Yeah, has (laughs) announced that the figure will be available in the Takara Tomy store, uh, like as an exclusive to the Takara Tomy store, but it was a little bit unclear as to whether or not that was dependent on the backing campaign or if it was separate. Because, like, people were speculating that, like, they mm-hmm. could still pick it up even if it didn't get backed by Hasbro. Because, like, the backing campaign is only for the United States That's and what I was Canada. about to say. Because, like, uh, yeah. d- like, very, very, like, uninformed hypothesis here. I bet there's going to be no problem selling these in Japan. I feel like it's going to be <laughs> yeah, very so easy. The- 
<laughs> it's not open. So this crowdfunding thing is not open to Japan. Yes. But the Takara Tomi would be. So, yeah, I mean, and it, obviously, you know, people could get stuff from Takara Tomi Mall here, but it would probably, like, cost more um what if they're actually already planning to manufacture it in japan and the because of how heavy it is it's like the crowdfunding in america is just the cost to ship the motherfuckers across the Pacific <laughs> ocean i don't know i'm basing that off nothing but i don't know i I, yeah, I feel like if they're only so, crowdfunding in the u.s i think it is too as with a lot of you know japanese content mm-hmm. it's a localization concern it's just the money of getting it over here but whenever it happens it usually makes a lot of money, but five hundred dollar yeah, toys. I, I can see why they're concerned. Yeah, I don't know anything really about like the uh, like factory manufacturing of the figures and like where it's based in. Um, mm. So I, I can't really speak as speak to like whether or not that's uh, a thing. But like people are also speculating that it it might be in Japan regardless of the yeah, campaign because no, like recently this uh, Figure King magazine, which is like a Japanese magazine um, dedicated to like high end Japanese figures. Did like a nine page spread on on this figure and like the history of unicron cron figures in the past which of, of which there's only like five and only like two of them were actually produced um so people are thinking like oh would they have like really jumped the gun on that if it wasn't kind of a um a done deal already yeah, yeah. and like that i don't know it's definitely like a pretty relevant story like this is definitely the biggest like actual news everyone in the community is talking about it in the you know transformers toy community in like a long ass time so i kind of think that they probably would make an article about it regardless you know but it's yeah it's so it's about a quarter of its backers right now and it's got till the end of august and i'm assuming that there's going to be a huge push right at the end like Mm -hmm. probably most of the people doing it did it at the end and at the beginning so i don't know we'll have to see i don't know i i hope that even if they don't make it that it's there's some form of limited release i may not be a purchaser of a lot of these high-end toys but i i'm always fascinated by the market I understand. Yeah, see, I, and I understand the risk uh, of producing. Something I've been like, but still. I've been going back and forth on this shit like pretty much daily. I'm like, <laughs> oh, am I gonna be able to like do this and then like have it be something that I figure out, or if it's something that's gonna be available later? Should I start like putting things aside, like savings? Oh for yeah, I it? guess we don't know. Or like, like yeah, would it yeah. just remove a huge stress in my life if I just committed to saying, nope, not gonna do it. Don't have that money because I don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's, but then again, it's like, it's really <laughs> like, a, yeah, or I don't know. You it treat looks it like, you treat it like an incredible. investment. They're not yeah. going to be making a lot of these things, you know? Yeah. Right? Oh, that, yeah. That's no. the other thing is that in, <laughs> it, it, um, yeah, if I had the money, but they actually limited the, the backing campaign to five per person for that reason Listen, that like people oh, would Lord. buy it and then resell it for twice the price. The, the most yeah. important thing you know is that you diversify your transformers. You don't want to put all your money into Unicron because <laughs> if the Unicron... Because if the Unicron market undergoes a crate depression and loses all its hat uniqueness, <laughs> you're gonna wish you had a couple primes oh and a couple sound waves in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Just to protect yourself from the incoming Haslab collapse. Yeah. Oh man. That was hard to so say. So following the news on this has been It was hard to listen to. But oh. could you just imagine how much everyone in every community would lose their mind if they released this figure with one of the infamous uh, fucking Team Fortress 2 hats <laughs> with it? <laughs> oh, God. T- Trans um. community. All right. Thank you, uh, correspondent. Thank you, guest anchor, for bringing... <laughs> These uh, both extremely delightful stories uh, to to my attention is the attention of our listeners. Now we're in the rating section of the show where we must, as an editor's room, come together and determine what is the top story, the most important piece of geek news in July of 2019. Yeah, now you may nominate a, a story. Uh, I discourage your first nomination from being your own, but if you feel strongly that yours truly is the most important, please go ahead and vote for it. Uh, These votes are not final. They are nominations. So I would like to first put up for top story, I would like to nominate The Crate Depression because everything from the name to the concept is just, it makes me smile. 
I know it's serious to a lot of people, and when I when I joke about it, I don't mean to downplay the fact that their investments are are like really <laughs> not working out. Like they did not diversify. Someone their has unicrons. to take out a fucking second mortgage on their house because of this shit. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh it's pretty God. fucking bad. Um, but I am both interested and fascinated by it, and all at the same time, I I, I laugh at it not because not just because it is ridiculous but because <laughs> i couldn't have conceived of it i couldn't have conceived that yeah. this would be a serious problem for a lot of people yeah. and and i respect it but i am so amused all at once yeah i mean see you i'm know, so uh, torn I, I appreciate it but you know this is a news organization and in the editor's room here you know what we're trying to do we're trying to sell papers right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what we did on the front page we need something that's going to grab everyone's attention tf2 is still kind of a niche market even in like you know if if we can if we can find like some uh some interest among ourselves in this stuff like we still want something that's going to get everybody we want everyone to to get their eyes glued to our papers next to the fucking new york times no fuck that shit that's that's lame as hell um and so you know it gets that people like watching tv what we're gonna want is to put news about the new star trek tv show it's had a couple of blockbuster films recent well i mean not as recently i feel like time has stopped for a couple of years just in my head and i think <laughs> oh yeah that happened last year and it was like no that was 2016 austin yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Anyway, yeah, no, I think... I like uh, the roleplay. Let me go get a cigar so I can J. Jonah Jameson this shit up. (laughs) I need pictures of (laughs) Spider-Man. But yeah, no, um, Picard. All right. I'm so torn here, because, like, I mean, for sure, undoubtedly, the most important thing to me is Unicron, but, like, that's such a niche market that I wouldn't have... But, like, so I'm stuck between... Where did, oh my gosh! Austin. The the lights on a timer. Oh, okay, I didn't cool. do that. Uh, I'm stuck between between two things. Um, I think the thing that like strikes the best balance for me between things that I'm personally interested in and things that are going to be relevant to the world at large, I think that lands on Picard for me um, because I think that's really. But also, this Team Fortress shit is really <laughs> fucking funny. So I don't know. Like I was like I'm. I don't know which of those I was gonna go with, and you guys made it a fucking tie decider and i uh, uh, i mean well, i think well, in well, truth listen, i was well, gonna well, go for picard but putting, we can still talk about it putting it well here's here's the thing i think austin i think austin has done a good job of, of sort of putting <laughs> the priorities of the paper of the common geeking paper uh th- just front and center is is essentially i'm nominating a puff piece one that i think that could get us <laughs> a lot of attention but something that might not really hit hard with our readers but you know what Short-term gains are still gains. I don't know. I feel like it. I don't know. I feel like it just hits hard in a different way. Like it hits hard for the people involved, super for sure. (laughs) But it also hits pretty hard on the funny bones of everyone who's not involved. Because I feel like anyone hearing this story is probably just like pointing and laughing, you know, to whatever degree of uh, what's the word Uh, legitimacy, Mm. I guess. But like, I I don't know. I feel like it's got interesting stuff for for everyone. But that really. Star Trek is like sort of the pinnacle of of like the geek representation and having a thing with like the Star Trek motherfucker like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his new Twitter <laughs> handle, believe it or not. <laughs> the Star Trek motherfucker, the Star and it's Trek just like his profile image is just him holding up two fucking middle fingers <laughs> to uh, William Shatner. Like, fuck you, you were a first, but I'm better, bitch! <laughs> um, Alright, well, after the most intense deliberation we've had in our editor's room, <laughs> which is fucking sad for a news program, um... <laughs> Uh, Star Trek Picard uh, win, wins He's out. He's beat out by story. Unicron <laughs> because he ate the whole planet. He ate the planet. He ate <laughs> Earth. <laughs> Picard's dead. He can't make he wine anymore wants except wants. in Unicron. Um, no, honestly, I'm surprised that, that and then like, he'll Picard, get Unicron drunk from inside. I've just been so used to Star Trek always like being like you know popular, but like new stuff excites the fans. I'm mm-hmm. so surprised that like especially the same Comic Con where Marvel Phase Four was announced that like I'm seeing and not just like on my Facebook feed like when I go out into other places I'm seeing more information about Star Trek than I am about Marvel and I'm just like I'm flabbergasted it's not gonna last obviously but uh uh yeah no I'm pretty blown away and I'm excited um 
So we will see. Anyway, thank you both for your wonderful stories. Star Trek Picard, top story for 2019, but highly suggest you either commit $500 to Unicron or Team uh, almost, Fortress hats. More than, almost $600. <laughs> almost $600 because we need to stabilize the Team Fortress economy as well. Uh, I have been <laughs> yeah. Colin Ketchin. I've been your host. You can find me online at Sonic Colin K. Uh, I've been joined again by Austin, who, wow, man. I, can I take a screenshot of this? No. Nope. Yeah, did. wait, let me yeah, fix it. Right, hold on. Okay. All right, that's going on the... You kind of look like you're, you're <laughs> cosplaying as Captain America in the dark. That's an effective use of a flashlight. Oh, oh I, I see. Thinking, yeah, it really thinking, makes it look like you've got a mask because of your glasses. Yeah. It does. It's very effective. Um, Austin, uh, as, as I understand it, you don't want people to find you online? Yeah, I still can't be found. Yeah, cl- <laughs> that's, that's life. I, Maybe someday. I also can't see most of your face now that your lights have gone out. So, you're so we can't even find you. We're on a call with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then jeff uh yeah i exist a little bit um i've got an instagram called things i wish existed and there's a dot between each word i put art stuff on there and i'm trying to do a bit more of that but that that's pretty much the main place wonderful cool. all right uh so common geeking program this feed comes out uh bi-weekly in august i think we have three fridays so this is going to be our first friday of of the month is when we do our common geeking our common briefing programs so first friday of september you'll get another piece of uh geek news the third friday we do our book club episodes where we just go all in on a single topic um prodigal son i think that we have one more episode in the can before we go you know full hog on the new format and i believe pat is preparing our first ever common beefing program uh which is basically going to be like this except instead of talking about news that excites us we talk about things that we don't like and does it have to be recent (laughs) stuff or is it just i don't think so because those are only going to be once every couple months uh, which yeah. I think is good. I, I don't want like, to put out like an all like negative we, feed. We do a fair amount of bitching in, in this one too, if it's something that's really relevant. Yeah, but I think that I think that uh, Pat of all my friends does maybe the best job of like really selling like an angry <laughs> attitude while still having it be a lovable endeavor. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I definitely need to get on there at some point because I can just find a disagreement with Pat and we can beef it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, other stuff. So all that uh, here in this feed is Common Geeking Program. The platform Common Geeking Program has some other stuff coming up too. Uh, this coming Monday, we're going to have another episode of How You Doing, which is a podcast that I do with Laura Kramer uh, of CGP, uh, where we try to stay friends even though we live very far away and never see each other. And I believe this week on Wednesday, we are also planning to launch Dice Populi, which is a tabletop podcast that has been in the works for a long time. And we're finally going to try to get it out there. I'm very excited about this one. Um, And (laughs) in that feed, we will have some more info. Uh, I was thinking of putting it in this feed. I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think I like uh, I was like going to put the first episode in here. I don't really think that that's probably going to be the best use of my time and effort but yeah this wednesday uh dice populi should have its own feed all of this is going to be on commongeekingprogram.com that's where you can check it out tune in for all our shit um next month uh should austin return he will continue to be a correspondent uh (laughs) maybe yeah three episodes in a row is a correspondent how about that (laughs) <laughs> that that's I'll try a, a special honor. Crap, I'm going to have to come up with the rewards in case you somehow continue to be available at the end of each month. That's it. I, that wasn't a joke. Cool. I'm actually thinking about how I'm going to run the show. Uh, I've been rambling. Either of you guys have final words before I stop my recording? Uh, good night, America. Good night, something, America. Something, something, Unicron. Yep. Should I buy it? Tell me. Give me feedback. I kind of, Jeff, if you get the ability I to mean, buy it. I mean our listeners, not you. Oh. I listen. Well, I mean, that's true. Yeah, what do you think? If I get the ability to buy it, I should. I if you have if you can comfortably do it, if it is within your means, I think you should do it. I'm also coming off of a week where I just bought a lot of shit, so I'm very much in the mindset of buy that shit. Buy that yeah. shit, Jeff. I think if it's like, oh, if I had to commit the money like by the end of this month, there's no fucking way. But if it was like, oh, if I can save up for a while, then maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Alright. Alright. Bye bye everybody. Goodbye. So long. Ooh, this was a fun one. We had some uh, good, I some good stories. Um. Oh yes. This episode of the Common Geeking Program is hosted by Colin Ketchin, joined by Jeff Levitt and Austin Liebers. This episode is sponsored by Flooding Loot Box Markets with Valuable Items. 
The money's got to go somewhere, and it's going to us. The Common Briefing Program is created by Colin Ketchin, Jeff Levitt, and Patrick Brem, and it is produced, edited, and featuring original music by me, Colin Ketchin. We will be back in two weeks with an episode of the Common Geeking Program Book Club. Uh, be sure to check out Dice Populi and How You Doing later this week. All of this can be found at commongeekingprogram.com, so tune in then, and thank you for listening to this. Um, I need to open the chronograph. I'm on there. In the internet. <laughs> it took me a little while to I find it because to... I swear to God, every single time I go onto Skype, the message thing is in a different place. It as is does... almost everything else. <laughs> it actually is in a different place this time than last. And I don't know if it's because I keep using the window in like different sizes and orientations. But Yeah, that I, might do I, it too. I am sharing that experience, the sort of like free jazz Skype interface that Microsoft has rolled out. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah.